This is the PARTNER-3 trial uh, presented at the American College of Cardiology um, annual meeting as a late-breaking clinical trial in New Orleans on Sunday, March 17th. Uh, it is a trial of TABR, transcatheter aortic valve replacement, compared with surgery in low-risk patients. There have been a total of 9,000 patients that have been randomized in the United States with this particular valve or early generations of this valve, and this is the fifth in a series of trials. There were 1,000 patients that were randomized uh, between uh, TABR with a transcatheter valve and surgical aortic valve replacement. The primary endpoint of the trial uh, was at one year, and it was a composite of death, stroke, and repeat hospitalization. Uh, the findings of the trial were that at one year there was a 46% decrease uh, in the incidence of death, stroke, or rehospitalization uh, in the TAVR arm compared to surgery. Uh, <clears throat> that met the study criteria not only of inferiority but of superiority. So basically what that means is that TAVR uh, uh, has better outcomes in the low risk population than surgery. All the previous trials showed that TAVR was either superior to medical therapy in inoperable patients or non-inferior equivalent to surgery in high and intermediate risk patients. So we, we weren't surprised that uh, TAVR was non-inferior uh, to low risk patients, but quite surprised that actually showed it to be superior. There are also multiple uh, other uh, analyses uh, done of the trial. Uh, first, that each of the components of the uh, endpoint, uh, death, stroke, and rehospitalization, favored TAVR uh, uh, compared to surgery. And there were a number of secondary endpoints that were also in favor of TAVR, uh, such as length of stay in the hospital, rate of atrial fibrillation afterwards, and bleeding. Uh, there were some uh, uh, outcomes that uh, favored surgery. Um, including uh, increased uh, uh, valve areas uh, afterwards uh, and less left bundle branch block. Uh, there was no difference in the need for new permanent pacemakers afterwards. Uh, so the conclusions of the trial is that uh, TABR was, uh, f uh, had an incidence 46% lower uh, of death stroke and rehospitalization afterwards and therefore should be a strong consideration in low risk patients. Now there are a lot of limitations to this randomized trial as to any randomized trial. Uh, the, the first is that the follow-up is only a year and in young patients we don't know how long these valves are going to last. So to address that, we are following all these patients for 10 years afterwards uh, to determine durability, not only of the TAVR valve, uh, but also compared to the surgical valves, which will also be followed for 10 years. Uh, second, this is only one particular TAVR valve, and it doesn't necessarily apply to all other TAVR valves. And it was all done by experienced operators in excellent trial sites. So it doesn't mean that everybody's going to get this result no matter where they go in the United States to get this procedure done. Thirdly, it was a very select group of patients. Uh, so there were uh, exclusions from this. Uh, you had to be able to have the valve threaded up through a transfemoral approach. Um, you couldn't have a bicuspid valve. Uh, you couldn't have a lot of calcium in your left ventricular outflow tract or low-lying coronary arteries. So it's not one size fits all that this is gonna be for everybody, but in this select group of patients uh, uh, treated with experienced operators, uh, TAVR uh, was superior to surgery for the outcome measured. <laughs> so what participating in innovative research like this means to me on a personal level is to be able to be um, uh, helpful in terms of developing cutting edge new therapy. If I look back uh, at when I uh, finished medical school and finished my surgery training, 90% uh, of the operations I do today are different than the ones that were done when I finished uh, 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 medical school. Uh, if you told me back then you'd be able to put in a heart valve without surgery and opening somebody's chest, uh, I would have told you you're totally crazy. 
But this really shouldn't come as, as uh, any surprise if you look all around um, the number of things that have changed. I mean, I was taking pictures with Kodak Film. Uh, you know, where's Kodak Film today? Uh, you know, I was buying movies at Blockbuster before Netflix came in, and I used to take taxi cabs. So the world changes all around us every day, and medicine's no different. These changes in medicine are happening just like the whole world around us changes.